G'day guys, me and uh, Tony here, we're off to uh, Hamilton to challenge an $80 ticket, so um, we'll see if we can get the same result as we did on the 12th, but uh, all things going well, won't take long, and we'll see if we can get the cops to pay for the petrol, catches, I will. Okay guys, so <clears throat> just a little quick recap and I can uh, talk you through what we're about to do here. First off, when we went to Hamilton yesterday, um, the first person I sought out was the police prosecutor. Um, and I wanted to give her a copy of the application for stay. Um, this is basically what it says, okay? It's this cover page, application of defend, stay of proceedings and an abuse of process. And section, 40, uh, section 147 of the Criminal Procedure Act 2011, discharge. Um, starts off with to the Registrar of Hamilton District Court and to New Zealand Police. This document notifies you that the defendant, Tony, applies to the court for the following orders. 1.1, a stay of the prosecution against him exceeding 60 kilometres per hour um, on such and such a date, such and such a time, pursuant to District Court Rules 15.1. Um, and then 1.2, discharge it from that offence pursuant to Section 147 of the Criminal Procedure Act. Two, the grounds on which each order is sought are as follows. 2.1. On the 12th of November, a memorandum to a judicial officer with an application for disclosure was sent to Hamilton District Court Registry and to Hamilton Police Prosecution Services seeking, among other documents, a witness list in accordance with Section 12.2a of the Criminal Disclosure Act 2008, that should say, not 2011, so fix that on the template. I will get to it. 2.1. On 13 November, a notice of appearance was sent to Hamilton District Court Registry and Hamilton Police Prosecution Services in accordance with Section 38.1 of the Criminal Disclosure Act 2011. And that's where I've got that one wrong because it should be in accordance with the Criminal Procedure Act 2011. I'm really going to have to fix these templates. And yet they still accepted it. Um, on the 21st of November, Police prosecutor Mr. Stephen Leak contacted Mr. Tony um, McKenzie friend me. Now you, that phone call is already up on YouTube. You can hear the call complete. And basically, I'm just referring to him saying to me during that phone call when I asked him for full disclosure. He says the full disclosure has been done. That was his response to me. Uh, Mr. Leach supplied his email address, which we had communications with, and he told us the new date it was the 23rd of, um, of January this year, as what he told me last year. And um, so we just peacefully waited, enjoyed Christmas. As of today's date, 23rd of January, the defendant has not been supplied full disclosure, including, however not limited to, a witness list or brief of evidence. The defendant therefore objects to any possible witness being called as no information relating to any witness has been supplied prior to the defendant hearing scheduled for today at 10 a.m. by Hamilton Police Prosecution Services, breaching section 12.2a of the Criminal Disclosure Act 2008 and the defendant's rights affirmed within the New Zealand Bill of Rights Act 1990 um, under section 24a and d. 2.6. Furthermore, as the progress of these proceedings has been subject to the above stated procedural flaws, a breach of criminal and a breach of Criminal Disclosure Act 2008 and the defendant's rights affirmed within the New Zealand Bill of Rights Act 1990 under Section 24A and D. 24A is to be uh, the right to be fully and fairly informed of the cause and nature of the proceedings and D is to be given adequate time to mount a defence. Uh, if they try to give you a witness list, just as you're about to have your defended hearing, you really don't have a lot of time to actually go through what the witness is, is allegedly saying. Neither do you have the chance under Section 14 of the Criminal Disclosure Act to request further information, you know, to vet their witness, to check whether or not that person has got previous criminal convictions. I mean, the whole point is, he's their witness, your job is to try and discredit that witness. So if they don't tell you who it is, you're really fucked from that point onwards, aren't you? Um, but it's, it's really interesting what the police prosecutor did yesterday because she accepted it, came back and had a wee word to me, and uh, <laughs> I pointed out to her, check your disclosure index. She checked it, 
I said, and do you see a witness list on there? No. Hmm. Then she runs away and does a little phone call and does the arm's length of, of accountability, just like all police do, and then, you know, at the end of it tells the judge, oh, I'm sorry, you're on it. It's these people who deal with our disclosure have stuffed up. It's not my stuff up. It's the people who deal with the disclosure. Well, I'm sorry, you're all wearing the same fucking hat and uniform. You're all police. Stop trying to pass the buck on to somebody else and for fuck's sake, accept responsibility for what you have failed. You know, like the Manukau police did on the 12th. They accepted their failure of, of uh, in their obligation to supply disclosure. But, you know, I can't expect the police to apologize too much too often because then they might make a habit of it. There's no limitations now, 2.7, because section five of the Bill of Rights Act says they can limit your rights provided they can demonstrably justify it. So, as no limitation to the defendant's right has been demonstrably justified, these procedural errors by Hamilton Police Prosecution Services constitute an abusive process. The application is made in reliance on the common law doctrine and abusive process section 147 of the Criminal Procedure Act 2011. Well, I got that one right that time. Should this court deny the application and direct directs to move forward with today's defendant hearing, the defendant requests an adjournment so the court can assign counsel to assist the self-representing litigant with cross-examination of any witness, should one exist. As this court would be well aware of the court's duty to inform the defendant, he would require assistance of counsel to cross-examine any witness as the defendant is not sworn to the bar. And you can look at the Evidence Act, Section 95, Subsection 5. It clearly says civil and criminal procedures. Yes, Mary Poppins, that's the lady that's been commenting on the previous videos, it does specify sexual rape and that sort of thing. Judges don't give a fuck. They use it as an all over encompassing. It says that you are precluded, which means stopped, excluded. You're not allowed to. Preclusion means you're automatically not allowed to do something unless they say you can, all right? And even if a judge does allow a self-representing litigant to cross-examine, he doesn't have to have any weight in it because it's not done by a bar member. It's, it's so simple. And, and Mary, the last answer, or the last response she gave me in your comments, you answered your own question. Sorry. And, and the whole point is, to, you're pointing out to the court you're aware of what their duties are supposed to do and what they're supposed to inform you, and the fact that they're not doing it. You know, it's, it's really that simple. If this court wishes to move forward without assisting counsel, or oh, assigning counsel for the sole purpose of assisting the defendant with cross-examination of any witness, should one exist, and breach natural justice pursuant to section 27.1, we know what that is, which is your natural justice, the right to observance of natural justice, or the fundamental principles of natural justice, of the New Zealand Bill of Rights Act 1990, and an appeal will be sought in a higher forum under the grounds of abusive process, miscarriage of justice, and judicial impropriety. In other words, I'll have you off on a two, Judgey. Um, dated today's date or yesterday's date from Tony the defendant. So, yeah, I sort out the prosecution, I mean, the police prosecution lady first, had a wee word to her, handed her a copy. Um, shortly afterwards, she comes and has another little word to me, which is where we have the whole check your disclosure index conversation. Shortly after that, the court registrar comes up just to find out who we were. So I gave her a copy of it as well. Thus, problem solved. They have been emailed digital copies and the police and the registry have both been handed physical copies. Okay, so when the judge wheeled in, and this is the first judge I've seen in a wheelchair, but you know, glad to see they're not being discrimination about that. And she wheels on and she didn't look like she was having a good day. Perhaps it's a full moon out there or something, but she read through it. She wouldn't have liked the last couple of paragraphs um, and then asked the prosecution, well, how do they respond? The prosecution simply said, we can't resist the application, Your Honor. You know? In other words, we fucked up, our bad, it's completely right, we have no objections to it. So, that means on the 12th of January, that's Tony, one, police, zero, and now to yesterday, 23rd of January, that would be Tony, two, P 
police zero. So he's just got one other matter to deal with. And the police have already breached a section 30 order by not supplying him full information, full disclosure. So see if you can guess what I'm about to draft up for Tony's third matter before the courts. Hmm? We could fuck around and wait for four months because it's scheduled for a call over hearing on the 25th of May, which means we've got to show up there at nine o'clock in the morning just to be given a date for a trial. So we could fuck around. The reason I wait till the 23rd, until the day of the defended hearing as far as the speed tickets were concerned, is because they have up until the defended hearing to supply you that. But, you know, when she offers to give me the witness list, I have a copy. It's too bloody late now, isn't it? That's why she got in return. Too late. So, you know, I'm not going to help them get over it. So, yeah. So that's the reason I wait until the day for the dependent hearing on that one. But as far as the airport incident's concerned, hell, on the 9th of, no 9th of November, the judge clearly made an order. And wouldn't you know, I actually have the transcript of that hearing just being supplied to us last week. So I might just read that out to you at one point very soon. We'll see what happens. We don't want to prejudice any matter that's before the court at the moment now, do we? So, yeah, that's all up and coming. But as far as January is concerned, it's been a, just a dandy month. Two to us, zero to the police. Two nil. Shall we go for a whitewash and go three nil? Oh, hang on. My ticket's on the 27th of January. Yes, just this Friday at Waitakere. So, um, yeah. Perhaps it'll be three nil by the end of January. It's going to be an interesting one, this one. It's going to have a slightly different tact. But uh, we'll, we'll see. All right, guys, clearly the uh, um, David Lee, who's the uh, issuing officer of my ticket, has been watching my videos. I can tell that because in some of the traps I sent for these guys that like to watch my videos, I say things like, oh, I hope he waited. He saw me for 100 metres, you know, following the operations manual for the speed camera detectors operators manual. <laughs> I point out what he should have done. And then strangely enough, in the summary of facts in his statement, he points out exactly the answers to my questions on the video. So clearly David's been watching my clips. If that be the case, g'day Dave. See you in court on Friday. Hope you're gonna have a fun day. I will be. Go have some fun with this guys. Rock them up because you've either got fear or fancy. You know, you can either be scared of these fucking bastards or you can fancy a bit of en bit of enjoyment and humour. And there is nothing more satisfying, and Tony will agree with me on this, nothing more satisfying than beating them at their own game with their own rules on their own court. And walking out with a huge grin on your face saying, thanks very much, enjoy your day. <laughs> and I must say, on the way out from the court, the, the ambience and the whole attitude of everyone in Hamilton Court. Honestly, it was like oil and water compared to Manukau. Manukau District Court, well, while Ben was there, were just harassing, obnoxious, rude bastards that had to get a complaint laid to get that sorted out. And now the guys at Manukau are all nice and lovely and butter couldn't melt in my mouth fast enough. But as far as the Hamilton staff are concerned, really nice looking CSOs, most of them females and easy on the eyes. Um, I mean, even the police prosecutor was easy on the eyes. I'm not going to say anything about the judge that came in, because uh, she, like I say, looked like she'd had better days. But as, as far as um, as far as the ambience and the whole attitude within the court, everyone was so extremely professional and courteous. There was smiles from everybody. The, just the whole atmosphere was so much a best sort of attitude I've experienced in any courthouse, and I've been in a few. So, um, yeah, I had to give them compliments on the way out because, you know, as well as giving people shit when they do something wrong, you should also compliment them if they're doing something right. So, yeah, it's not that I want to, you know, bend over and say, thank you, sir, may I have another to any of them? You know, that's <laughs> that's David's new job, isn't it? Or is it David or Peter Hopkins? Or David Hopkins, whatever the new PM is, Ginger. 
whatever, you know, him and Jacinda since 2006 have been buddying up with the same bloody politics and shit. And it's no surprise she picked him. They were both bloody recruited by Tony Blair and Helen Clark. So, over in the UK. So, um, yeah. Anyway, enough of my babble, guys. Hope you enjoy. Um, catch you later. And we'll see if we can go for three for three by the end of the week. Hi, are you, any of you guys the police prosecutor? I am. You are? Yes. Give me a copy of this. Okay. Yeah. Email with the three for you as well.
Please don't oppose to your application, so the charge is dismissed. Cool. Thank you. Let's go. Hello, people. Well, 40 minutes later, we're heading back to Auckland. <laughs> Case dismissed. Handed the application to the prosecutor. She sort of lost the story and says, have a look at your disclosure index. There's no witness list. So then she rung up and she checked to, and I like the way she did the third party thing. Oh, yeah. We called this place that deals with our disclosure. Yeah. And they've confirmed no witness list. So guess what? Two for two in January. Dismissed. I guess my application for dismissal worked. Again. Okay. So we're just going to go for the third one at the airport, aren't we, bro? Yeah. We'll see if we can get that fucker sorted out. On Friday, yours truly gets his own speeding ticket court case in Waitangere. So, Monique, if you're watching, come and watch. Uh, it's, I, I think it's at 10 o'clock in the morning, but uh, email me if it's not. And, um, yeah, another job well done. Cheers, Mark. Awesome. Good. awesome. See you later, guys. Thank mm -hmm. you.